Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be working on some 3D printer software. More specifically, the Repetier Host version 1.6.2. So now if you're watching this video in the future and what you're seeing right now is completely different from what your software looks like, then I suggest you go find a different video. But this video should work for most of what you're trying to do because the settings really shouldn't have changed. So let's get into it. So the 3D printer that I have is a PrintWrite 3D. Uh, if you go back to some of my other videos, it covers on uh, how to upload a file from Inventor to the 3D printer. So if you've created it on CAD, then you can do so. And you can go watch a video on there if you'd like to see how that works. But today, we're going to specifically focus on setting up the software so that way you can connect it to your 3D printer and it works correctly and some of the basic settings. I will not be going into detail about the slicer settings. Separate. Um, that will be a separate video that I'm going to make because in itself that is a lot of stuff to cover in one video and this would become like a 30 or 40 minute video if I wanted to cover everything. So let's get into it. So to start you want to make sure your 3D printer is on because there will be issues if uh, that is not connected so uh, that's the first place you want to look if uh, you have some connection issues. But once you turn it on, you'll see a little red flashing light on your motherboard, and the fan might even spin up on your uh, 3D printer for a quick second and then turn off. So that means you're in good shape from there. So how I connect the 3D printer to my computer is through a really long USB cable. It's about 15 feet long. I got it on Amazon. It works really great because I hate using the SD card because sometimes it doesn't work, and it's cheap, and it just makes life so much easier. And now... We're going to go to the top right corner and click printer settings. Bam. And you're going to select the correct port and you're going to set it to this baud rate if you're using this 3D printer. Um, in the manual it should specify what baud rate to use. Uh, so check your manual. If you don't have a manual, look online. And if you can't find it, uh, if you feel free to just leave a comment down below and maybe I can try to help you or somebody else can. So. That's pretty much that. And then for the port, you can set it to the, um, if you know exactly what port it is, you can set it to the port or you can click on auto and it should be able to find it, no problem. Done. Printer, this is some other settings. I mean, not necessarily important because a lot of the stuff you can change to the slicer, but if you want to set it to what I have right now, works good if you have a PrintWrite 3D. Bam. And let's see, that's not really that important, but if you want to keep those settings that I have, they work well and that's that. Now this is actually quite important for the printer that you're going to use because this is going to set your limits to how big your printer is so that way the software knows exactly what your 3D printer looks like. So as you can see right here it's going to say the X max and the Y max and that is 200 because it is a 200 by 200 bed but there's also going to be offsets here is where the extruder goes into the the home location which is slightly off the bed so that's why it is a negative 20 and negative 15 and also the same thing applies for the other side of the bed so if you follow these settings exactly for the printer then you should be pretty good to go so if you just want to double check these ones should match these ones and then the print height is 170 scripts this is more advanced stuff if you want to have the extruder do uh, more things that you'd uh, like it to do to have more control you can just type down here below and you can just get it to do the things that you want it to do and here are some more advanced settings uh, the post slicer filter I have no clue what that does so if you guys know what that does then leave a comment down below because that would be great and that's pretty much it after you've set all the settings make sure you hit apply and I already did because they're standard and they'll click OK and your print platform should be like this. If you have a PrintWrite 3D, it should be a square. If it's not, then that means you need to go back and check your settings. All right, so now that you've turned on your 3D printer, you've loaded up some filament, stuff like that, uh, time to connect it up. And if you guys want to know exactly how to fill up the, put filament inside the 3D printer, at least for the PrintWrite 3D, I also have another video on that. I will leave a link in the description or right on the screen. Bam. And now that it will say disconnected with the green thing, that means that if you click the button again, it will disconnect, and click the button again, it will connect. Down you go. There we go. 
Now, let's double check to make sure it works. All right, looks like it's good because it moved throughout the whole thing. It homed, it knows where it is now, and we're all set. Okay, so now we're gonna go through some of the steps that it takes to set up a part on the bed and get it printing. So first thing you'll want to do is go to load. This is where you're going to load all your parts that you make, stuff like that. So for example, I'm just going to start off with this. Okay, and that's what I'm printing. Uh, it's some kind of uh, bowl thingy majig. I don't know exactly what it is, but let's just print it for whatever reason. So we are going to go to the right side we are going to select scale object. I mean, I'm not going to have to scale it, but if you guys want to scale it, go ahead. Uh, this you can use to, uh, to scale any object you want. So two times the size, that's get you two times the size. And let's just move back to one. This will lock your uh, scale if you want to. Otherwise you can make it all weird and stuff to make it like an oval bowl, football bowl, or you can make it stretch it out height wise. That'll make it weird like that. And if you just want to reset it, bam, reset, and then lock it back up to scale so that way it doesn't get out of proportions and stuff like that. Next, let's move to the rotation. So this is a circular object, so most of the rotation doesn't really matter, except if it's uh, on the x-axis, and that will turn it sideways like that. But everything else will stay the same. Oops. That won't stay the same. The z-axis will stay the same because it's a circle. So that is that. So if you guys have any issues with how it lays on the bed, then um, that is how you fix that. And you can always lay flat or reset the resolution or rotation, I mean, and that will fix that. And then you can always center the object, so center on the bed, bam. So now this part of the software I really don't get. Um, well, actually, if you guys are wondering how I'm moving this around, if you right click onto the object, you can move it around the bed. If you left click, you move the whole entire bed to change your view. So let's go back to this. Um, as I was saying, this part of the software I don't really get. I mean, I guess you can kind of see how it's going to print or something, but it's not like you can leave it like cut in half like this, right? So you can see how it looks, or you can put it at an angle, sweeping thing like this. It's weird. So. If that's something that you uh, need, I guess, then go ahead and use it. I mean, like, this one doesn't even do anything, so I don't know why they put that in the software, but that's that. And now, mirror object, obviously, it just mirrors the objects, but since it's a circle and it's all symmetrical and stuff, you won't be able to notice it. And now, let's say I want to do two copies of this. Click the two copies thing right there, then this pops up, and then I can select another copy. And that will give me another one where we can go with two more and copy. And now we've got four. So you can move them individually by right clicking and stuff like that. And we can just delete them either by clicking on, right clicking on them like this and clicking the trash button or just by hitting the delete button, right click, move it around to the center, center of the object, bada bing, bada boom, you're done. Okay, we are almost ready to print. The last thing we got to do is put it into the slicer. Well, we always also got to heat up the bed, but put it into the slicer by clicking this. But uh, this is actually not standard with the Reptier host. It comes with this slicer, which is the SLIC3R slicer. Uh, I personally like the Cura because it, I believe it uh, slices a lot faster and there's more options and stuff like that and I just think it actually quality wise it actually prints a little better but I don't know that's my opinion um, you guys can test out your own uh, most of them are free so that's good and all I gotta do is click the slice button and make sure your settings are here correct I'm actually gonna max that out because I wanted to print fast and also quality wise I want to print at 0.2 millimeters and I will make another video on how all this stuff works right now it really doesn't matter because I want to cover the basics of using this software and not 
the basics of using a slicer because using a slicer there's a lot of stuff that goes into it and I do not want to make this thing an hour long video. So I'm just also going to go with the infill density of 15 which is a pretty standard infill. Um, you don't want to go too much because you'll be wasting a lot of plastic especially if you aren't going to use it for something that requires a lot of like structural integrity stuff like that. So once it's sliced then it's going to give us a printer preview is going to give you an estimated time. Generally it undershoots it sometimes especially with uh, um, with these kind of softwares where they're not matched perfectly with the 3D printer because it doesn't know exactly what it's going to do and stuff like that. So this is just a rough estimate. I, I would say this would probably take an hour and 50 minutes not an hour and 36. So that's something you want to count for when you're uh, setting this up. And now go to the manual control. So what personally I like to do is before I get all the parts and stuff ready, I like to set the bed temperatures. Uh, I like to set the, set up the heated bed and set up the extruder so that way they're already heating and they'll preheat and stuff like that while I'm working on the part and making sure all the settings are good. Because they do take a long time and if you have all that stuff done, generally by the time you're loading up your part and everything like that, uh, most of that stuff will be heated up and you won't have to wait as long. Because right now, I have to wait for it. Or if you did the print preview, it automatically, if you click, go to print preview and then click print or uh, start print up here, um, most of the, all that uh, heating would go automatically and you just have to wait anyways. But this is what I like to do. I like to turn all this stuff on. And you can quickly adjust the uh, temperature settings once uh, it's ready to print uh, to down to like 65 or 205 or 210, 195, whatever you like. These are the settings that I use for PLA and they work pretty well with this 3D printer. And, but then again, every printer is different, every thermistor is different, it could be off by a few degrees, and every plastic is different, so whatever works for you is what works for you. But uh, these are settings that I use, and they work fairly well. You can also control the fan. So if you see that um, there's a lot of extra heat, or uh, it's not the, uh, the extruder isn't... Uh, staying cool enough and it keeps like dropping and raising in temperatures that can mean that it's overheating and then it's just trying to lower the temperature and it's not staying stable so you might want to turn the fan on and also in general when using PLA you want to use a fan to help cool down the parts so that way the layers are better and they won't be as mushy and we're just gonna wait for this thing to finish heating up and we will be ready to go so also make sure your bed is leveled uh, that's a fairly easy process to do and uh, most 3D printer softwares come with an automatic way of doing that, but this one doesn't. And basically all you have to do is put your extruder around the edge of the bed and in the middle, making sure it's the same height all the way around, about the thickness of an index card in between the bed and the extruder. I like to get the plastic to like flatten down a little bit, um, so that way it's just a better stick, and it has worked pretty well for me. So now, I'm just going to wait for this to heat up, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so now everything has been sliced, the, beds are, the bed is heated, the extruder is heated, so now we are finally ready to print. So all we have to do is hit this button, and we are good to go. But uh, if you ever, for a reason, need to stop it for a reason, you can either kill the print, or you can emergency stop. Uh, either of those will automatically stop it. It's just that kill will take a little bit longer because it has to finish up the line of code that it finished off on. So let's start it. Okay, so the 3D printer is on its way. You can probably hear in the background a little bit. Yeah, that's it right there. Uh, it's going to give you an estimated time when it's going to finish. And all the stuff right here is going to stay the same. So uh, it's staying at 70 degrees and 200 degrees Celsius. So that's good. Nice and stable temperatures. All this stuff is locked up so that way you won't accidentally hit it and mess it all up. And now just have to wait for it to finish and uh, that's pretty much it how uh, you set up the printer for uh, printing I mean as long as it's a .stl file all files should work um, it should all work 
But I did uh, find out about something that if you just in case run into it. So during this process of placing it onto the bed, if you get a little orange message here that says like it's not watertight or something, um, you want to go to that website and fix it. Um, it is supported by Microsoft or Windows or something like that. So you have to put in your Microsoft account. I do it all the time because sometimes parts aren't exactly um, going to work and it's going to mess up the whole uh, slicer stuff and everything. Man, that thing's loud. But uh, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. Please like this video if you liked it and subscribe and peace.